Interesting. Um, we've now got um, a slight change away from uh, the English Parliament theme to the um, electoral reform theme. We've got a young lady coming from um, Make, Votes, Make Votes Matter, Kleiner Jordan, who is a... Um, Make Votes Matter is a cross-party organisation. Kleiner has done a lot of work going around lots and lots of meetings, and I'm very interested to hear what Kleiner's got to say. Um, it's quite interesting for me personally, because um, in, Gloucester, in Gloucester, where I'm from, uh, the local MP, Conservative MP, was recently appointed by Boris Johnson to be, I think it's um, Ambassador to the World Democracy Forum or something, which basically means he goes to places like Kazakhstan and Albania and tells them, to, tells them how to run a democracy. So, as is the MP for Gloucester, I, said, I wrote to him, because so, I was the parliamentary candidate, I said, well, don't you think your time would be better spent in Gloucester, Richard? He's also called Richard. He's little Richard, I'm big Richard, actually. <laughs> anyway, um, so I wrote to him about that. And then I, I wrote to him and said, actually, before you go to Albania and Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan and tell them how to do it, can, you, can we start with this country first, please? We've got an unelected second chamber. We've got a, 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 an electoral system that produced one MP for, a, for four million votes for one party. And we've actually got an um, expenses system whereby members of your party, the Conservative Party, Richard, seem to have done what they like. Look at South, South Thanet. We don't know what the results of that will be. And there are allegations, um, obviously, I'm not going to get sued, allegations of electoral overspending. So it seems to me before British parliamentarians, Conservative, Labour, whatever, Lib Dem, Lib Dem go to former Central Soviet Republics, Central Asian Soviet Republics, or to the Third World, or to Africa, or to Asia, or to the former Eastern European countries, and tell them how to do it, we should get it right ourselves. So, thank you. Hello, everybody. Um, let me know if I don't speak loudly enough, because I tend to speak a bit too quietly. Put your hand up if you can't hear me at some point. OK, I'll speak louder. <laughs> Um, so first of all, thanks very much for having me here and thanks Guy for organising, much appreciated. It's great to see so many people coming and spending part of their Saturday on these really important issues. So well done, you're the people who can change things. Um, this, as many of you are aware, is the centenary of uh, women first winning the vote, which is obviously a very big milestone in improving our democracy. Um, there have been many, again, many of you are probably aware of the history of the Chartists and uh, other improvements that have happened since women won the vote as well. But we think this is a, a strong time to take stock and actually improve again. And um, from Make Votes Matters perspective, uh, the most important change that we need to be making now is having votes that matter, uh, having proportional representation. So to start off with, I'd like to do a show of hands and see who already is in support of proportional representation. Everybody else. OK, it's a, it's a good I mix. Mean, it's, it's, <laughs> some, some abstentions there, right. yeah. So, so I'll, I'll tell you a bit about what we're up to, and then maybe I'll see again um, if, if anyone changes their mind later on. Hopefully I can convince some of you. So does anyone here know how many votes were wasted in the 2017 election? All of them. 68% of votes were wasted. And to me, that is not something that happens in a democracy. This is not a real democracy when so many votes are wasted. In lots of democracies where they have proportional representation, as few as 1% of votes can be wasted. And wasted votes, by the way, the te technical term is votes that don't count towards the final result. So they might go to a losing candidate or they might go to a winning candidate <coughs> above and beyond the number that they need to win. So sometimes a, an MP will win thousands and thousands more votes than they actually need to win that seat. Um, and those votes also don't count. Um, so what we want to see is a situation where everybody's vote is actually counting towards electing somebody. Um, so it's actually more like a choice than a lottery. Um, I'd like to kind of go back a little bit um, to the EU referendum and tie in the important bit about the messaging from that to what we're doing. One of the big rallying calls from that referendum was take back control. And I absolutely agree that we need to be doing that. And that's something that's agreed across the spectrum of all the parties. And as Richard said, we are a cross-party organisation. For me, we need to take back control from Westminster as well as from the EU. And we need to make sure that everybody is represented, not just the minority. 
The last time we had a single party majority government was 1931. That means all of the other times, there have been a couple of coalitions along, that, along the way, but mainly we've been represented by a minority and the majority had voted against that minority. So this idea about there being an elite that is uh, in control and not necessarily representing us all is absolutely correct. In fact, in three of the last elections, most people got an MP that they didn't vote for. So three quarters of the time, most people aren't getting who they want. And I'm sure a lot of you have voted lots of times and never had the MP you wanted, or maybe rarely had the MP we wanted. We hear this all the time. Um, one of the interesting things about proportional representation, which just to be clear, it simply means that seats match votes. So if a party gets 20% of the vote, they get 20% of the seat. It results in better outcomes. So better social outcomes, better economic outcomes, better environmental outcomes. The list goes on and on and on. Um, a more a kind of egalitarian society where everybody's represented. So um, Make Votes Matter, um, as has been said, is a cross-party campaign for proportional representation. We work uh, from the grassroots up to the top of the kind of political alliance building arena. Um, so we've got local groups all over the country taking action, doing street stalls, holding events, going and talking to people to uh, change people's minds. Um, and we also work with the political parties as well. So the Make Votes Matter Alliance already includes all of the great British parties, opposition parties, aside from Labour, and then lots and lots of Labour MPs. So there are already 80 Labour MPs in favour, in favour um, and that includes the Shadow Chancellor, John McDonnell. The reason I talk about Labour is because to win PR, we need one of the two big parties on board. And at the moment, it's not looking like it's going to be the Conservatives anytime soon. Um, so we're specifically focused on trying to turn Labour. And I can bring you a lot of hope in that respect. There's a big sea change happening within Labour that they're realising more and more that they actually need to represent the people and uh, they, they need to see seats matching votes. So we have a, a big focus on um, changing things within the party. So we train speakers to go and speak to constituency Labour parties. Um, and by the end of those sessions, which is really just facilitating a conversation, the, the majority are in favour of PR by the end every time. So when you hear the arguments um, and the myths, and there are a lot of myths around PR and first past the post, once those are rebutted, people actually realise that there's nothing to fear. Like the majority of democracies already use proportional representation. 85% of developed democracies use proportional representation. So, let me skip forward a little bit because I don't want to take too much time. Regarding the alliance, one of the interesting things we're doing at the moment is running quarterly meetings and um, the most recent focus on our project, which is just coming to completion, to fruition at the moment, is the Good Systems Project. So you're probably aware, a lot of you, there are lots of different voting systems out there. There are, in fact, an infinite number, as many as human beings can invent, can exist. Um, but there are already a whole load of different permutations in use around the world and indeed within the UK. So for those of you who don't know, it's worth mentioning, in the UK, we already have proportional representation. The additional member system is used in Scotland, Wales, Ireland, Northern Ireland, and um, in the London Assembly. Um, and single transferable votes also used in Ireland and for local uh, elections in Scotland. So that's just two of the, the, the various options available. The reason I'm not going to start talking about voting systems is because you can quickly get sidetracked by all the details, the technical details of voting systems, and some people will be really interested and a lot of people won't be really interested in that. Our focus is on the principle that seats match votes, and the, the fo focus of the Good Systems Project was to uh, generate agreement between the parties about what constitutes a good voting system. And so obviously, good proportionality is really important. Having local representatives is really important. And again, this is one of the uh, accusations aimed at PR that you lose your local MP. It's simply not true. That we, nobody's advocating one of those systems. Um, so we've now got this list of uh, nine uh, principles which is this close to being properly formally signed off by all of those opposition parties and the Labour groups involved with the campaign. 
Um, and so we're really hopeful that we can move from that and generate further steps to having this cross-party consensus of how we actually make this happen. So that's, that's very exciting. Um, I'll tell you a little bit more about the grassroots now um, in my last few moments. Um, this year, as I said, being the centenary, we're uh, trying to bring a lot of focus onto the need for another step change. And so on the actual date, the centenary of um, women winning the vote for the first time, we organized a, an event called Hungry for Democracy. And we have people all over the country going on a 24-hour hunger strike, or a fast, if you want to call it a fast, um, demanding proportional representation. So there are over 400 people did this, and this included all sorts of MPs and celebrities. So Brian Eno was one of them, and the now ex-chair of UKIP was also doing it, um, along with representatives from all the other parties. Um, and we got a whole load of media attention for that. And so we're obviously wanting to make this conversation as loud and as visible as possible in the mainstream. Yeah, so again, this is something we hear very frequently. And the trouble with that is that there are lots and lots of people who want PR, the vast majority of the country, in fact, when polled, want PR. Um, and in fact, we're doing another poll. We did one just before the last general election. We're doing another one now. So we'll be able to share the results of that with you soon. Um, but uh, in terms of systems, lots of people want different systems. So the Lib Liberal Democrats want a different system to those within Labour who want PR, and the SNP have their own preferences and so on and so forth. As the conveners of the Alliance to Make Votes Matter, we have to take a neutral position and bring them together to work together, because if everyone's pulling in different directions, then you can't actually make things happen as effectively. And so you might say, well, we all need to unite behind one system. But the trouble is that debate's been going on for well over a century, and people still have different preferences, because people have different um, values and different priorities. And so actually, if you can agree the principles of what constitutes a good voting system, then you can have a consensus. And so that's why our Good Systems Project is focused on the principles rather than the specific systems. And the principles then rule out systems that aren't good enough, that aren't proportional enough, that don't have the constituency link, that um, aren't democratic enough. So some list systems are actually uh, generated by the parties rather than by the public. And for us, that's not democratic enough. So what we try to do is bring it back to the principles, and then you can get everyone in agreement and pulling in the same direction to bring about the change. So you don't actually need to say, we all love AMS or we all love STV. Um, we just say, we all agree that this is good and this is not good, and then you can work together. Thank you. Just... <laughs> we're going to be here for the break, aren't we? Yeah. Um, Kleiner will be here. We're going to stop and have coffee and tea. Kleiner will be here, and I'm sure she'll be very happy to take questions. We can come back to it briefly after the break as well. I'd just like to say, actually, that was really very, very interesting. Thank you very, very much okay. indeed, and a big round of applause. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.